Welcome to the program. It is good to have your company on the most awful of mornings after the events of yesterday outside Bondi Junction. I still feel very much um, like this community, um, this area, and the nation is trying to come to grips with uh, what happened yesterday afternoon. Uh, just behind me this morning as we go to where police investigations are continuing, they continued uh, through the night and all around this area, uh, police uh, making their presence felt. Elsewhere around Sydney, uh, there are families dealing with the most awful awful of grief. Uh, we will have all that coverage coming up through the course of the morning. This is what we know as we go to air um, right now. Uh, we can report the identity of one of the victims, first time mum, Ash Good, whose final actions were to attempt to save her baby's life, throwing her into the arms of two strangers. She's just one of the six people killed, five women. Authorities have warned that number could rise. In hospitals across Sydney right now, eight patients are being treated, including that nine-month-old baby. We'll get an update on her shortly. The offender, who is yet to be identified, entered the Westfield and began his attack around 3.20 yesterday afternoon. A lone senior female officer confronted him and opened fire, shooting him dead, ending the violence. This shopping centre is still closed this morning, including the car park, so many survivors prevented from taking their vehicles by police. Right now, the investigation's focus turning to who that man in the footy jersey was, as this morning new video sheds light on the final moments of this attack. And a warning, the footage we'll be playing right now is confronting. This morning, new insight into the terror at Westfield Bondi. Level 5, almost deserted. But it's this shopper, unaware danger is nearby. On the left enters the man in the green and gold jersey, his knife hidden behind his back. And a split second, life or death moment. He lunges at a shopper who falls to the ground and scrambles away. Just 20 seconds prior, standing centimetres from where a killer would soon be, a young girl. She's lifted to safety, hidden in cotton on, just seconds to spare. As the attacker charges, close behind, that female copper being hailed a hero, and she's not alone. Brave bystanders joining the chase, one armed with a chair. For a few moments, it's silence. Then, the offender is killed. It's horrible, it's, um, especially with my daughters, because I thought they were outside and I was going to get out of the store. To find them. To find them. And they shut the door and it was a matter of three minutes that if I would have gone outside looking for them, because that's exactly where it happened. We heard, we heard like I said, heard gunshots, heard the screaming. There are many acts of courage. One shopper grabbed a bollard and took him on. I thought, who are these people running around with bollards? Um, is it just kids being stupid or something? And then we saw the guy with the knife and we thought, well, you know, are they trying to stop him? There was a man coming up the escalator, another man at the top of the escalator in front of Woolworths throwing something at him to keep him down. I saw the gentleman fall and then um, he's picked himself up and ran up the escalators. When he's turned, I could see he was holding a knife. It was a hunting knife about 30 centimetres long. Others rushed in to offer first aid to the wounded. Bondi lifeguard Andrew Reid was shopping in Meyer when he was told about the stabbing. The store shutters came down, trapping them inside. And I was looking down and there was a lady down on level four um, that I could see that was, was bleeding out pretty badly and I was like, and she only had one person with her and I was like, I've got to go and help. He convinced an employee to let him out. I went out and there was uh, two people helping her and there was police everywhere and it was kind of anarchy, like there was, and then I looked down sort of the corridor of Westfield and there was multiple victims, like, like sort of 30 metres apart. There is just nothing about this story um, that isn't so overwhelmingly confronting. Some of those stories of heroism, the people who came here just to help out, um, the officers and the emergency services who rushed in, unfortunately, some didn't make it, five, in fact. Uh, let's touch base with the victims who did make it, though. Sarah Stewart is standing by at the Sydney Children's Hospital where that nine-month-old baby is fighting for life. Sarah, good morning. 
Yeah, good morning to you, Carl. Look, we have spoken to police, New South Wales Health and the hospital this morning. They have all confirmed that this nine-month-old baby girl remains here at the Sydney Children's Hospital. We are being told that there was some sort of surgery overnight. No details on what that surgery was for or if she will need more surgery. We are expecting details from police to come through later this morning, but the most recent was that she is in a serious but stable condition and we are hoping that that remains the case after her surgery overnight. We're also hearing more about how she was inflicted with her injuries. We are being told that she was walked in a pram with her mum, Ash Good. They were simply going through the shopping centre, as so many mums do, pushing their babies around the pram in a pram on Saturday afternoon. We are told that he then attacked the baby and then the mum. The mum grabbed her baby. She handed her baby to two people nearby because she was suffering horrific injuries herself. We know that those two men were able to get some material, get some towels. They were holding on to the baby and they were able to get that baby to paramedics who then transported her here to the Sydney Children's Hospital. Sadly, her mother was taken to St Vincent's Hospital. She was under police escort but sadly died a short time after arriving there yesterday afternoon. Now, Carl, there are several people still in hospital this morning. We are told that eight people were taken to hospital. Police aren't able to confirm that number, though, this morning. They're saying it could be more, it could be less, because so many people were going in various um, directions yesterday afternoon. But we do know they are in various hospitals. As I said, the Children's Hospital here, St Vincent's, also Royal North Shore, St George and RPA. They are in varying conditions this morning, a few of those undergoing surgery. Carla, our thoughts with them, with their families, with their loved ones and all of the emergency workers this morning. That's for certain. Um, just such a horrible scene and um, like many, I guess, um, my thoughts were with that father um, who is grieving a wife and his little one is fighting for life in hospital. That's overwhelming. Um, let's go to Jack Hahn now at Westfield uh, Bondi Junction uh, just behind me. The word filtered out very quickly yesterday and it is a shopping centre but it is also a very big community and it felt like around this area that everyone knew someone who was inside at the time. Jack, good morning. Good morning to you, Carl. You're spot on. This really is Sydney's biggest and busiest suburban shopping centre, a place that someone in this city, anyone, has been to multiple times. So people felt a connection to what was happening here yesterday, whether directly or indirectly. They went through that roller coaster ride of emotions, wondering if their loved one was inside, checking in with people here in the eastern suburbs. Now this morning we're expecting to see the grief and emotion on display with floral tributes to be laid here at Bondi Junction. And you can imagine that they will be turning out in their dozens, scores, lots of people coming here. Now, we also need to spare a thought for the survivors that were inside yesterday and were confronted with the carnage. Many will need to make a return here to a scene of such trauma and terror for them. Police made the decision to preserve the crime scene yesterday and lock down the car park. There is more than 3,000 car parks at this shopping centre. Many were occupied yesterday, giving you an idea of how many people were inside. But it will mean that these survivors will need to make a return here to this scene. Many may have been running for their lives yesterday, confronted with the knife men or hearing the sound of gunfire. So no doubt it will be a difficult day for them and one with a lot of heavy emotions returning here to Bondi Junction, Carl. That's for certain. Uh, Jack Hahn, thank you. Let's turn now to that investigation I alluded to um, at the top of the show. Uh, police forensics uh, have spent uh, the last 12 hours or so inside the shopping centre um, looking for more evidence. Um, there's plenty around though, isn't there? Detectives are yet to identify the, the offender. Sophie Walsh joins us now. Uh, Sophie, can you give us the latest? Yeah, Carl, they are yet to formally identify him, although they do believe they know who this man uh, was. They believe he was a 40-year-old man who had no known links to terror organisations. And yesterday, they believe he was a lone wolf, that he was acting alone. The investigation will look into his background, into, you know, where he grew up, uh, any family he has, his close circle of friends. His home will likely be raided today. They'll also look at the movements of his car, where, where that has been around town before he carried out 
this terrible, terrible attack. Police will provide an update on the investigation at 8 o'clock uh, this morning. In terms of Westfield Bondi Junction, it remains closed today. It remains a, a crime scene, although they will start, try and get people's cars out who parked here yesterday uh, afternoon. They'll try to do that later on today. Uh, forensic teams, as you mentioned, remains on site, remained on site throughout the night. They will remain here today collecting uh, evidence as they try and piece together exactly what happened. Uh, this is a massive area to canvas. Westfield Bondi Junction covers seven floors across 100,000 square metres. There is a lot of area to cover. One thing working in their favour is every single one of those shops likely would have had CCTV, so every single one of these attacks, every, every angle of them will have been covered uh, by CCTV and will, will have been caught on camera. Carl. That's for certain, uh, Sophie. Um, as you point out, um, everything we're looking at is covered around Bondi Junction in this shopping centre, um, so they're going to have plenty of that. As to the question of why, I'm not sure when those answers will come, but um, families will certainly want to know. Look, uh, the pictures um, have been beamed around the world, um, this story taking hold all around the world, and plenty of tributes um, over the last 12 hours as well. This from the King and Queen. The events in Sydney have shocked, saddened, and even angered people all over the world a place many associate with happiness and sunshine, making headlines for the wrong reasons. News bulletins here in the United Kingdom immediately interrupted. Major networks right across Europe and the United States breaking into rolling coverage of the tragic events unfolding thousands of kilometres away. With reports of shots fired and people stabbed at a shopping mall in Sydney. The breaking news, a man armed with a knife stabbing people in a crowded shopping centre. It prompted a swift reaction from the royal family, King Charles releasing a statement through Buckingham Palace. My wife and I were utterly shocked and horrified to hear of the tragic stabbing incident in Bondi. Our hearts go out to the families of loved ones of those who have been so brutally killed during such a senseless attack. Our thoughts are also with those involved in the response and we give thanks for the bravery of the first responders and emergency services. A statement too from the Prince and Princess of Wales who we know have taken a step back from the spotlight. We are shocked and saddened by the terrible events in Sydney. Our thoughts are with all those affected, including the loved ones of those lost and the heroic emergency responders who risked their own lives to save others. Signed, W and C. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak posting on X, formerly Twitter, saying everyone affected is in the thoughts and prayers of the British people. Heads of state and everyday people, mums and dads and children all over sharing in the pain being felt in Sydney and across Australia. Hey there today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?